This video is about key ideas which we should keep in mind while solving or proving trigonometric identities. Now I have another video which is to discuss the strategies to solve trigonometric identities. Right? So I have kept these two topics uh, right in the very beginning of my set of videos so that first you understand what trigonometric identities are and then you get a feel of how to prove trigonometric identities, right? I'm using the word to prove rather than solve sometimes because in trigonometric identities, basically, you have to prove that left side is equal to right side for all values in the domain, right? Now, here are the things which you should keep in mind. A trigonometric identity is an equation, right? With trigonometric ratios, it is true for all the variables. That is kind of very important. And that is also a difference between identity and an equation. Whether it is trigonometric or algebraic or any identity or an equation, correct? Uh, just to give you an idea, algebraic equations could be identities also. For example, you have a square minus b square is equal to a plus b times a minus b, right? So that is an algebraic equation and it is also an algebraic identity, right? It is considered to be identity since it is true for all the values of a and b, okay? An equation will have few solutions, one, two, just few solutions, right? It, the equation will not be true for all the values, right? Until and unless the two equations are exactly same, correct? Now, so this is what you need to understand here, that identity is true for all values. However, there are some restrictions which we are talking about here, okay? So we'll, that's the next topic. So let's go again through it. A trigonometric identity is an equation with trigonometric ratios that is true for all variables, right? So you'll have some trigonometric ratio, uh, sine theta, cosine theta, you know, these terms. An identity is an equation that has infinite number of solutions. It goes with the first one. Well, it is true for all values, that means all values in the domain of the function, correct? Now, for example, if I say tan theta equals to sine theta over cos theta, right? So it is true for all values of theta, correct? Except for you cannot have cos theta equals to zero, right? So the restriction is that cos theta is not equal to zero, correct? So that is the restriction. Right, pi by 2, 3 pi by 2, 5 pi by 2, right? So those values will not be considered because those are the restrictions. The denominator cannot be 0. And that is why we have few restrictions, correct? So that is important to understand. Now, then identity can have restrictions as the denominator cannot be 0. So this is the point which you need to understand. Right? So it's not blanket that all real numbers, right? There are some restrictions, just as you do in rational functions. Now, next point is, to prove that an equation is an identity, start from one side of an identity and transform it into the expression on the other side. That is the strategy which should be followed in proving trigonometric identities. And we'll explore on this in the next video which I'm saying strategies to prove this, how to prove one side equal to the other side, okay? So that's where we'll leave here and then continue with the next video. Thank you.